Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and in this video I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Celestron CGXL German Equatorial Telescope Mount. This is not the first Celestron mount I've ever used for astrophotography. I actually started with the Celestron CG5 entry level astrophotography mount and uh, the CGXL is uh, a few steps above entry level. I'm not outside in the backyard. The weather's just been uh, horrible lately. It's so cloudy. So here I am in the basement going over this mount. So the first thing that's really noteworthy about this mount is that it has a 75 pound payload capacity. That's a ridiculous amount of weight for some really huge and heavy telescopes like uh, a Celestron C14, like a giant SCT. Uh, but this mount would have no problem with that. So because of that payload capacity and the general overall size and stability of this mount, it's considered an observatory grade mount that you could actually mount this EQ head onto a concrete pier in a permanent observatory. And there's a number of other features uh, as well that lend itself to having a permanent setup in an observatory with a mount of this caliber. For someone like me uh, that doesn't have a permanent setup that brings my gear in and out of the garage night after night, uh, it's a bit overpowered. It's uh, I don't have any telescopes that would even come close to maxing this thing out. So uh, because of that, it's very heavy. The, uh, the EQ mount head alone is about 50 pounds, but luckily it has this carry handle on one side and then one over here too. So it's actually quite manageable. But picking the whole thing up with the, uh, the tripod attached and this heavy metal uh, spreader tray is just impossible. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to try breaking my back and doing that. It's, a, it's over 120 pounds the whole thing when it's all said and done. The overall build quality of the CG XL is really impressive. Some of the things that really stood out to me were uh, these heavy duty RA and deck clutch locks. Like when you lock it, it is secure. There's no wiggle to it at all. The, the other thing that I really noticed was the counterweight bar. It's this like, it's not a, the traditional chrome finish. It's like this brush nickel looking thing with this just super sized stock nut toe saver on the bottom. It's just a really impressive mount to, uh, to see firsthand. All the knobs, as you can see, are just like insanely huge. So for adjusting the latitude, it's not going anywhere. And that's, that all comes at this extra, the cost of this extra weight. Putting the mount together out of the box was, it took a bit of time just because of the size and the, the weight of everything. This spreader tray, like to separate these legs was a task. I, you really have to pull on them, make sure they're all the way out, and then adding in the spreader tray until it actually makes contact with the legs. Uh, like this thing is really, really on there good. Speaking of the, the tray here, it's really cool that they included a spot to have your phone or your tablet right here, uh, which is something that I always do, whether I'm just checking something online or I've got a planetarium app going there. I thought that was a really nice touch. And there's little things like that about the mount that um, Celestron listened to user feed, feedback and then started making these updates to their, to their mounts. That's really evident in this one that came out in early 2017. So this is a very new mount. There's also some pretty cool Celestron specific uh, tech to do with this mount. Uh, one of them is the Celestron All-Star Polar Alignment System. So this is something I used back on my CG5 and it was actually the first way I learned to uh, polar align a mount. So the, the All-Star Polar Alignment System doesn't require that you actually look through the polar axis of the scope, although you can get the accessories to, to do that method with this mount. The All-Star Polar Alignment System uses uh, any, bright star, any bright name star that you can see through your telescope and you enter that information in, in and it uses the position of the stars as you find them to tell you exactly which way you need to adjust the mount to, uh, to get it perfectly polar aligned. It was uh, totally different than the way I do it now, but I actually really enjoyed it early on. I, th I think it's a great way for beginners to, uh, to polar align a mount. So 
that's not exclusive to the CGXL. That's, uh, I believe that's on all modern Celestron mounts these days. So because this is a computerized go-to telescope mount, it uh, includes the hand controller with, uh, I believe it's over 40,000 objects in the database. So this is where you'll punch in uh, the star you wanna find, enter it in, and the, uh, the telescope will slew to it and track it. You can control your, uh, your tracking speeds. There's nine slew speeds as well for when you're doing your polar alignment or just uh, navigating throughout the sky. There's an insane amount of uh, connections on this mount and all of the positions are well thought out for cable management. That was something they paid a lot of attention to with this mount. Over here, there is a PC connection that goes directly to a USB into your computer. That uh, will communicate with the onboard PWI software that was uh, co-authored by Plane Wave Instruments. There's also an auto guide port over here. There's another auto guide port over here, so there's two. You'll only ever need to use one at a time, but the two positions are just in case one option is a better fit for your cable management. Very cool. There's four auxiliary ports, one, two, three, four. One of them is being used for the hand controller. I'm not exactly sure what the other ones would be used for just yet. The uh, power switch is over here and uh, the power input actually has a threaded lock to it. So you don't have to worry about knocking this out accidentally. The dovetail saddle up top here is the uh, dual design. So whether you have the uh, Vixen style or Lozman D style, dovetail bar on your telescope mount, so the, uh, the uh, narrow ones like I have on a few of my scopes, or the wider plates like on my FLT-132 or the Esprit 100. These giant locks, some of these heavy scopes you're gonna put on here, you wanna be sure that it's locked in tight, and you certainly will be uh, with this. So here's a look at a telescope attached to the CGXL. This is the uh, William Optics FLT-132 refractor. The biggest telescope that I've got right now, the heaviest one. So this is the, the best match for a mount like this because as you can see, look at the counterweight with my heaviest scope. It's a single weight right near the top. So to go any lighter than this and you would need a different counterweight, you wouldn't get the right balance. So um, let's just take a look at the uh, releasing the clutches here in the uh, declination. I'm still a little bit front heavy. So I'll unlock these gigantic dovetail um, locks and slide it down a bit. Normally I'd be, uh, I'd be okay here because I'd have more weight in the back, but I, just, I don't have a camera or anything attached right now, so it's kind of front heavy. So that's pretty close there to balance. Could work on that a little bit. But as you can see, very smooth movements. And then these, uh, these clutch lock levers are really secure. There is no messing around, there's no give there because it was meant for these uh, you know, big expensive telescopes. And then in the RA, I'm pretty good because I kind of went through this already. Look, it's still a little bottom counterweight heavy with this big old refractor on here. So pretty close, but look at that. It makes this refractor just look like uh, a small one when really it's a monster. So this is a serious, equatorial mount for serious telescopes. But this is what I'll be using with the, uh, the CGXL and uh, it looks to be a great fit. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, first look at the uh, Celestron CGXL. I really haven't even scratched the surface yet of what this could do of course. I need to get it under some clear skies outside uh, but I plan to do so very soon. I hope you join me uh, for that as I take a look at the software and the Nexstar hand controller and the All-Star Polar Alignment and the auto guiding and tracking accuracy performance in terms of astrophotography. It's one heck of an impressive uh, telescope mount. It's certainly not cheap. This one was lent to me from High Point Scientific, so there'll be a link in the description if you want to check it out there. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for the next video when I, uh, when I start actually using this thing. Thanks a lot for watching. Clear skies.